Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to calculate the MACD line and that involves calculating exponential moving averages for stock prices and in this example here I've downloaded Apple's stock price history over the past year and I've left room for a 9 day exponential moving average, a 12 day and a 26 day. So what I'm going to do is start by creating a formula that's going to be um, flexible enough that I can use variables so I don't have to keep recreating these formulas all over again. And I'll leave a link to, to a file that has these calculations in here so if you want to um, follow along that way you can. So I'm going to create some variables here. This is going to be a 9, a 12, a 26. And then with exponential moving averages you always want to apply a, a weighting to the more more recent values and typically that's 2 divided by a factor of 1 plus the n and so I'm just going to copy those formulas over and so now what I'm going to do is create a formula that says okay if it's within the first nine days we're just taking the, the simple average and then after nine days or in this case 12 in this case 26 then we're going to apply the weighting so to do this i'm going to use the if function and use the count a function this just simply counts the number of cells within within a range so in this example it's going to be pretty simple for this line it's just b5 to b5 and to say okay if this is less than or equal to you know this variable then what I'm going to do is take an average and that average is just going to be b5 to b5. Right now this looks like a, a pretty odd formula but I'll show you how it's going to work in a second. And if it's if there's more than nine data points then that's what I'm going to apply the weighting. I'm going to take this 0.2 weight and multiply it by the difference between this closing value and then the previous exponential moving average which would be right here right above right now that would error out but that's uh, that that uh, argument is not going to be um, or, or that calculation is not going to be applicable because there's fewer than um, 10 items here and then add to that the previous day's exponential moving average okay so right now it's a pretty complex formula I'm just going to close this out and now the key thing I'm going to do here is apply some some freezing of cells because this is what's going to make this formula work. So anytime you're doing running averages or, or cumulative values, what you want to do is freeze the very first cell. So it's always going to stay at B5. It's not going to adjust as you move the formula down. This other B5, this one can stay frozen just at the letter so that it's as it expands, it's going to stay at B5 and just expand slowly with, with each cell. C1, that's referencing this value here, so that needs to stay frozen at the row level. As I copy this across, I want uh, the column to change, so I'm just going to freeze the row. For the average, it's going to be the same thing as for the count A. I'm going to freeze that first cell and then just freeze the first column for the, for the second range. C2 is my weighting, and again, I'm just going to freeze that, that row, number 2, because the column can change, but the row does does not need to change now for this other calculation here this can just be frozen at at the letter at the column okay and now I'm going to copy this down and now let's prove this out so I'm going to go through the first so this is the first nine items here and so this should just be a simple average average 136.99 which looks to be correct now if I go into my tenth data point now this is where I can double check that the moving average or that the weighting is being calculated. So I can go up to formulas, hit evaluate formula, and now let's take a look to make sure that this is calculating properly. So there's 10 items and so that's that's more than 9 so this simple average is not going to apply. It's going to jump into the second argument where it takes that weighting of 0.2, multiplies it by the difference of B14, which is this 134.14, and this previous moving average of 136.99. So it takes that difference, multiplies it by the weight, and then we add it to the previous weight. 
is a13. So now we've got that exponential moving average because we have that weighting now being applied to the most recent results. So now what I can do is copy this formula all the way down and now if I copy this across, actually the one thing I didn't end up freezing properly here was d4 here. So let me just double check that one. So we had the C4, but once we copied it over, it was still referencing that previous one. So you just want to double check when you copy these formulas over that they're referencing the right values. So now it looks okay before copying these down. And so now again, that looks okay. So let's spot check one more of these. So let's go down to about, let's say here, row 11. Evaluate, we've got the count is 11 items, so that's more uh, or equal, less than or equal to 26. So in that case, it's taken the average, which is correct. It's going to be 136.55. Let's double check that, 136.55. So I need to go down to about 26 data points. So let's go to count. We've got 27 right here. So this one is going to be over that threshold. So let's double check that that's calculating properly. So again, 27 is not less than or equal to 26, so that's right. In this case, we're not taking the average. We're taking that weighting of 0.07, right? And obviously with the rounding, it's a lot more uh, numbers than that. And then we're taking that difference of B31, which is 120.99 minus the previous moving average of 134. So it's taking that difference, multiplying by that weighting, and then adding it to that 134. So this is just a good check just to make sure that your that your formula is calculating as expected because anytime you're um, copying over cells, you want to make sure that, that you've applied the, the freezing correctly and then it's working as you expect. So right now we've got the 9, the 12, and the 26-day um, exponential moving averages calculating correctly and we've copied them all the way down to the bottom. So this is an important um, first step in doing the MACD calculation. Now that I've got those moving averages set up, the next thing I'm going to do now is create the MACD line. Okay, And the MACD line is really just the difference between these two moving averages, so the 12 day and the 26 day. So I just do 12 minus 26, copy this down. And because for you know, these first 12 instances where the averages are identical, I can just delete these for the sake of um, making it a bit easier to, to calculate the, the signal line, which is what I'm going to do next. So the signal line is another exponential moving average. It's a, it's a nine day average of the MACD line. So this is where I want to keep these values blank so as it's not including them in that in that count calculation here to say that there are values in there. So I'm going to copy this and I can cheat and just put this in here and say okay. Copy the signal line and in this case I'm referencing the MACD line. So just moving these cells all over just so everything's consistent. Now so I'd enter it's going to give me a, a div error here but Again, I'm going to delete these first first 12 items here and then copy this all the way down. The last line I'm going to calculate is the MACD histogram. And the histogram is the difference between the MACD line minus the signal line. MACD line minus the signal line. Copy that all the way down. And now I've got my calculations in there. So I've got the MACD line, the signal line, and the histogram. And so I know there's a lot of calculations in here. This can be a bit tough to follow. So again, I'll leave a link in the description for this. And um, so now that these um, these columns are all set up, now I can move over to actually mapping these on a chart. Okay, and so now that everything's ready to go, we can get in the fun stuff and actually creating the, this chart. So I'm going to select anyone in the status set, go to the insert tab, and open up the charts. And I'm going to go to all charts, go to combo, 
And for the MACD line and the signal line, those are going to stay as line charts. But for the histogram, I want it to be set as a column chart. And now, right now this doesn't look anything like I want it to look like, and that's because it's including all these extra columns that I don't need. So I'm going to right click, select data, and just remove all these items except for the MACD line, the signal line, and the histogram. I'm going to hit OK. And now there's still a couple things wrong with this chart right off the bat. And the first is that there's these noticeable gaps between these between these column charts. And anytime you're dealing with histograms, normally there should be min a minimal gap, if any. So what I'm going to do is right-click Format Data Series. And for the gap width, you can adjust this to you know whatever looks looks decent to you. I usually go to go to 50%. I find that's a nice mix between just enough of a gap and avoiding it looking like a big continuous blob, right? So a column chart it's look a bit better spaced out, but there's still the problem of these gaps. You'll notice there's these big noticeable gaps between this this data set. And the problem here is that, you know, the data that we've downloaded here comes from, you know, the the Apple's closing price every day. And the stock market only trades Monday through Friday. So you'll notice these gaps are the weekend. So we'll go from January 7th to January 10th. You know, we've got from, we, we go from the 31st of December to January 3rd. So these are holidays and, and weekends. And so we've got that gap because Excel's recognizing that, you know, we don't have anything for these days. And so that's, that's what that gap is. So to fix this, I can right click format access. And the, the problem lies here. It says automatically select based on data. So Excel's looked at this column and recognized that these are dates, so it's formatting it as a, as a date, and that's how it's noticing that data is missing. An easy way to fix this is just by selecting text access instead. And now those gaps disappear because now we're not treating it as uh, date values anymore, and Excel is not making that assumption that we're missing information. Another thing you'll probably want to do here is because now this has gotten a, a bit messy, is under the labels section, change it from next to axis to low. And now that pushes those values down. And obviously if you want to, you could even delete them if you prefer. But now, you know, we've got something that looks similar to a MACD chart that you might see on a financial website where you've got the, the histogram showing the differences and you've got the MACD line and the signal line. So that at the very least should give you a, a pretty good starting point for customizing the chart to make it look how you want it to. So hope you found this video useful and thank you very much for watching.